Hi, it's me once again on my research blog, Discover Social Sciences. So it's me, Krzysztof Waśniewski. And uh, this time, this update on my, on my research blog is a little bit unusual. At least it is different from the previous ones. Because I am experimenting a little bit with new forms of expression. This time I am more video than text. So of course, as usually, if you click, uh, if you click on, the, uh, on the link under the video, in the description, there is a link uh, to my blog, to, to my blog Discover Social Sciences. So by clicking on this link, you access uh, the page of my blog and then you can find the update in the text form, uh, which, which has the same title as this video. Yet, uh, the difference as compared to my previous updates is that this time there is more in the video than on the blog site. Uh, so in the video this time I am trying to pitch a business concept of mine, a concept which I labeled energy ponds. And I am essentially using my blog and I am using this video update to practice pitching that business concept. So it is a little bit of an experiment. For the first time in my, uh, in my videos, I have scripted myself somehow, so I have structured the whole video into separate scenes. I hope I get it right. Huh? I mean, I, 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 I hope I haven't made any cardinal mistakes in recording this video. Anyway, in a moment I will start pitching that concept of mine. Uh, once again, click on the link under the video in the description. This is the link to my blog site and there you can find more content. Hmm? Okay, so I start. I pass to the first slide of my pitching. So the concept uh, uh, that I am presenting is called Energy Ponds. Mm, uh, a few words of introduction before I go further. At this moment, at this very moment, it is like an open business concept. Uh, my point is that I don't really have any, first of all, any conclusive financial calculations because one of the things that I discovered is that this concept is very sensitive to location. It depends on the country, depends on the exact river it is being located on. Yes, it is connected to rivers. So, uh, uh, I start uh, with the general description of the concept. Uh, so, the, the general idea is to combine the retention of water, uh, the retention of rainwater, with the generation of hydroelectricity. And, uh, roughly speaking, every river that uh, we see, that river is like a drain pipe of the adjacent land. Huh? So all the water, all the rainwater that falls on that specific area gets drained to that river. Huh? And, uh, and, and this is why we have that concept in hydrology called the collecting basin of a river or the draining or drainage basin of a river. So essentially every river is like a drain pipe of the land that is on, the, on, on both sides of the river. And uh, my idea is that we can retain rainwater by capturing it in the river. So the rainwater falls on the ground, it gets progressively drained to the stream of the river, and then from the river we can collect it. We can collect it with the pumping technology. And to pump it by a structure or through a structure which is a little bit like the ancient Roman aqueduct, you can pump it into uh, a retentive structure essentially made of wetlands or in the form of wetlands. In a moment I will explain why wetlands and not big retention reservoirs. Uh, the technology that I propose for pumping water from the river is the so-called ram pumping. Uh, a ram pump is a pump which works a little bit like the human heart. Uh, the ram pump is powered uh, by the kinetic energy of the water flow. Uh, so essentially a ram pump in itself doesn't need any external source of energy because it is essentially powered by water that flows in the river. 
Now, a ramp amp creates elevation. It, it, it creates by itself a, 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 some kinetic energy, and that energy can be used to elevate the amount of water to a certain, to a, uh, to a certain height, like 20 meters. And 20 meters is, by the way, the working height that I assume in all my calculations. And then that water can fall back from that elevated tank. It can fall back into the retentive structure, which is a wetland. And on its way back, it can pass through uh, water turbines, through, uh, through hydroelectric turbines. And thus it can create an output of electricity. So that's the general concept in the following slides, in the following scenes, I am explaining the most important aspects of that general idea. Okay, so I pass to the, to the explanation why I propose to, uh, to retain rainwater in wetlands instead of big reservoirs. Big retention reservoirs, well, they are big. Hmm? So only big capacity and big investment in these projects makes any sense. It doesn't make sense at all to build and exploit a small retention reservoir. Because those things really work when they are really big. And therefore, uh, the construction of a retention reservoir is a big intrusion into the natural environment with all the consequences. For example, you have to change uh, the way that roads go in the given place. Huh? And, of course, it has a significant impact on land management because those big uh, reservoirs are usually uh, connected to expropriation. And finally, it has a big environmental impact. On the other hand, wetlands, well, wetlands are natural structures. Wetlands are structures which for many decades or even centuries we have been trying to get rid of. Now as the climate changes, wetlands sort of return. I noticed it in my own country, in Poland, in, the, in my whereabouts where I live, uh, that summer after summer, flood after flood, wetland structures re-emerge like, spontaneously. So they are something that nature has invented for us. We can just use it. Uh, wetlands are uh, scalable. So you can, uh, you, you can make them small, you can make them bigger. It is all about scalability and, and it is practically impossible to create wetlands which would be against natural environmental conditions. Because if the hydrological conditions in the given place allow the emergence of wetlands, they are acceptable by the, uh, by the ecosystem. So here comes my explanation about the reason why I want any pumping technology in that whole concept of mine. Most big rivers, uh, at least most big rivers in Europe where I live, are embanked, so their banks are reinforced, uh, either red and they are reinforced with like visible structures made of concrete, or they are reinforced sort of inside. So when you see a typical European river, the banks, even if the banks are covered with grass or with vegetation, underneath that vegetation you have reinforced man-made structures. And the water essentially cannot uh, freely flow through those uh, man-made embankments. So we cannot really um, just allow a river to flow and spontaneously create wetlands. We have like too much man-made structures in river banks uh, 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 presently. So the idea is that we need some kind of, pump, uh, of uh, pumping technology to collect water from the river, from the stream of, of the river, and pump it up and away uh, from the riverbed into the wetlands where we want to retain it. Now, as for ram pumping, uh, ram pumping is an old technology. It is a technology uh, which, as far as I know from history books, was used in Europe already in the 16th century. Uh, 
in big cities like Paris, uh, ram pumping was commonly used for pumping water from the river which passed through the city uh, up and away into houses, into utility buildings. It was a common thing, apparently. Uh, we just, uh, uh, with the advent of the modern plumbing and water supply installations, we just uh, sort of forgot that all the technology, but it is uh, sort of still present. Now, back in the day, a few centuries ago, uh, that pumping of water from the river using the kinetic energy of the river was made mostly with paddled wheels. Huh? Paddled wheels uh, are cool, but they have low mechanical efficiency. Whence the proposition, my proposition to use ram pumps. Ram pumps on average have the capacity to create a greater, stronger flow of water. And most of, of all, which is important for this concept, for the concept of energy pumps, ram pumps have the capacity to elevate water to a significant height, like 20 meters or 30 meters, and this is what I want here. And uh, the idea of ram pumping is that simply we can retain rainwater by making it loop into our landscape. So instead of uh, retaining water in one place, we make it loop from the river to the wetlands. From the wetlands, it gets progressively collected and drained into the river, back into the river, and then we loop it again. So it is like retention by recirculation of rainwater. Uh, now the concept of combining ram pumping with uh, the hydro generation of electricity. Uh, the basic idea is that a ram pump, when it works efficiently, can elevate water. Here on the slide uh, I put an elevated tank, an elevated water tank. Uh, I think in my concept those tanks don't need to be really big. They don't need to be like big water towers. Uh, the elevated tank, which I see in this specific technological concept, would be something small, just like an equalizing device to, ass uh, to assure a continuous uninterrupted flow of water uh, without the absorption of air. And now one remark which uh, might have uh, like slipped out of my, my, of my mind earlier, when we collect water, from the river by the means of some kind of pumping technology, in this case by the means of ram pumping. Uh, that process of collecting water is called absorption and uh, there is al always that question how much water can we abstract from the river uh, without harming ecosystems which are further downstream. So roughly speaking in my calculations for this project I assumed that the uh, acceptable abstraction of water is 20% uh, of the total flow per second, you know, of the total flow in cubic meters per second. So it is 20% in my calculations. Probably it has to be adapted to the exact location and to, to, and to the exact river and the way it, it is being exploited. So once water is elevated uh, into a water tank, and you know, uh, let's say an equalizing water tank, which uh, we have something like an ancient Roman aqueduct. We have an elevated point from which water can descend and on its way down it can power hydroelectric turbines. So we essentially, first we use the kinetic energy of the river to power the ram pump. The ram pump creates its own kinetic energy which elevates water to a certain point and, and thus kinetic energy created by the ram pump gets converted into potential energy of elevated water. Then as the water descends back down into that wetland structure, the potential energy gets converted once again into kinetic energy and on the very bottom of that descent it can power a hydroelectric turbine. So that's, the, let's say, the physicality of it all. Now, as I said in the introduction, this concept is an open concept. I am struggling with uh, 
solving some challenges for the moment they look to me like conceptual challenges or intellectual challenges uh, but in the practical uh, implementation of that energy ponds concept these will be obviously business and engineering challenges to overcome so first of all i give a short list of them and uh, then I focus on discussing each of them separately. So I see like four big points, four big problems to solve here. First of all, ramp pumps, such as you can buy them today. I mostly checked on the side of British firms because they are very big on, manuf on, on manufacturing ramp pumps. Ramp pumps are very expensive in relation uh, to the flow of water they can assure. Shortly speaking, electricity that can be possibly generated in that specific technological concept, in the concept of energy ponds, that electricity cannot possibly pay, or the sales of that electricity cannot pay for the investment required to install the ramp pumps, which can give the flow that can give the energy. So that's the first puzzle to solve. The second one, it is the use of land. Uh, this concept requires to like, reserve a certain surface of land for those wetlands. Mm, I discuss it a little bit further because there are, let's say, some, uh, some sideways to take. We will see it further. Uh, the third point is the storage and distribution of electricity. It is the question of optimizing the storage capacity and the distribution system for the energy that gets created in that concept. And finally, uh, the last challenge it is the combination of hydro generation with other renewable sources of energy. So I pass to challenge number one. So the capital cost of ramp pumping. Just to give you the business idea of what I am talking about. If you calculate the so-called levelized cost of energy, or LCOE for good friends, for hydro generation on average across the world, it is about 5 cents per 1 kilowatt hour. If to this I add a technology of energy storage, the levelized cost of storage, or LCOS, um, I calculated it or I found that cost for lithium-ion batteries, which seem the most promising technology of storage right now, it is once again around 5 cents per 1 kilowatt hour. But if I recalculate the estimate of the capital cost in ram pumping or the capital cost that would be necessary to invest into ram pumps to generate the proper amount of electricity, it goes like $30 per one kilowatt hour. It is absurdly high. I mean, there is no, there is no way that any, uh, that any amount of electricity sold in any real market could pay for such an investment. So we needed to solve it somehow. Challenge number two, the use of land. Uh, the use of land is uh, essentially a question of some kind of compromise. Because uh, if we take a continent like Europe, we have essentially two types of uses of land. There is the agricultural land or farmland, and there are urban or peri-urban settlements. There are some experiments right now going on, especially, I mean, a program which goes on right now in China. It is called the Sponge Cities, which covers, I think, if I remember well, some 40 cities in China. And the concept is to, like, combine or interweave, intertwine wetlands with urban structures, precisely for retaining rainwater. So there are some compromises that can be possibly achieved between a wetland structure and an urban structure. On the other hand, there is no possible compromise between wetlands and agricultural land. You cannot grow plants on wetlands or, or you cannot grow crops on wetlands. 
you cannot uh, graze your cows on wetlands so there is like a sharp divide huh? so it is uh, it is once again a challenge as for land management in the location where that energy concept would be implemented uh, the third challenge it is the storage and distribution of electricity it is commonly assumed in the literature right now uh, that any technology or any installation which generates electricity from renewable sources like water, wind or solar needs a storage facility as a mediating system between the generation and the final users just to equalize the output of energy just to collect the surpluses and uh, and uh, compensate those moments when energy stops being generated at the source for some reasons. Uh, now we strike some kind of the same paradox as with, as with challenge number two. Because our energy will be generated close to a wetland structure, so close to something which is essentially countryside. Energy that it is going to generate will be the most precious possibly in densely populated areas like cities. Uh, but once again, the amount of energy is not really big. The amount of energy that we can generate from those turbines is not really big, even if it, it gets installed on a big river. So maybe more natural a market for that electricity would be small settlements like villages or, or, or small towns. Once again, it is a conceptual problem that I am struggling with, that I invite anybody who is willing to join the fun to contribute to, to solving. Huh? Challenge number four. Uh, so the combination of that basic concept of energy ponds with other renewable sources of energy, essentially with uh, wind and with solar, with photovoltaic. I think about that combination essentially because uh, wetlands were, in my concept, water is supposed to be retained, those wetlands take space. They take space which uh, is precious, especially in densely populated regions like most of Europe. In the same time, uh, installations which involve wind turbines and photovoltaic farms, they also take space. They are known for taking a lot of space and for not being very like very good friends with uh, dense human settlements, with dense urban structures. So my idea is that if anyway we take some land away from normal exploitation, away from normal use, we convert it into wetlands, we could think about putting in those wetlands some wind turbines, some photovoltaic modules, just to enhance or optimize the use of land and optimize the generation of energy. Now in terms of operational cash flows or like the here I give the, the main benchmarks of my idea. We could say that assuming that uh, the technology of ram pumping we use can pump water from the river to an elevation of 20 meters so to a, a, a hydraulic head of 20 meters uh, then, under that condition, one, meter, one cubic meter per second of water flow pumped from the river can give around uh, 0 0.15 kilowatts of electric power. That's the basic, uh, the basic calculation for making any prediction, any forecast of operational cash flows in that system. And we have to keep in mind uh, that we have a cost of generation and a cost of storage which in total is at least 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So uh, the whole thing is likely to work as a business concept if uh, we can sell that electricity generated in that installation at a price of at least 15 cents per kilowatt hour which is feasible in some places in the world. For example, it is feasible in Poland, where I live. 
but not everywhere. For example, in China, you have, uh, uh, we have huge rivers, or, or they have huge rivers, where, according to my simulations, that installation of energy ponds could take like a giant size, but the prices of electricity there are so low that uh, the market is unlikely to pay off for the generation of power in that system. And the final slide of my presentation, the final component, because uh, when I think about the business concept, I usually focus on like the key assets, the most important assets uh, that anybody who invests can like bring to the table. And here, in the first place, the most important thing that I see is that the asset that could really make the difference here it would be a radically new technology for manufacturing and installing cheap, efficient ramp pumps. Huh? Because that's the main technological challenge that I see for this specific business concept. Ramp pumps, if the whole concept is supposed to work, those ramp pumps should be much cheaper and much more efficient than what, at least according to my knowledge, to my best knowledge at the moment, to what is available in the market. The second important asset, or the second most important asset to bring to the table here, uh, is uh, essentially the right to use a certain area of land. So, I, I, and, and by that I, I, mean, I mean that the asset should sort of materialize as reliable legal claims on land, uh, and those claims should be accompanied by relatively low legal risk. That low legal risk is important because that installation is supposed to last. When we calculate uh, the return on investment in such projects, it is like 20 years. So here, once again, uh, we need something reliable, some reliable legal scheme to exploit the land where those uh, wetlands of energy ponds will be installed. Okay, so I think it is all in that pitch. Maybe I will make another one because those, uh, those videos, those pitches serve me to practice or to rephrase the idea many times. Huh? In science or in philosophy, it is called reflective equilibrium. Anyway, I wish you a nice reading on my blog. I hope that this video has been somehow inspiring for you. Maybe you want to join the fund because right now I really look for partners to develop this uh, idea. So, hi and I wish you a nice afternoon.